Philly. Here we are. We're at a protest against the nomination of Judge Kavanaugh to the U.S. Supreme Court. People are speaking out. Let's go. Uh, really quickly, I just want to get this number out to folks. If, you, if any of you need help, we see a lot of folks here who are um, distrained emotionally. Um, so please dial 1-800-656-HOPE. Uh, as one 800 656 that is a sexual uh, assault survivor's helpline if you need a space to talk. I'm also here, um, and I'm sure we're, we're around family, essentially, so um, you can talk to any of us. Um, I was just sitting here listening to some of these stories, and I'm just honestly getting pissed off as I hear more and more and more. Because I remember a couple years ago, they talked about uh, the, the bathroom ban. Talked about a bathroom ba banning transgender people for, for what? The safety of their children, right? Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have a man accused of sexual assault who they are trying to appoint, appoint to the highest court in the land. Yeah. It is ridiculous. Yeah. It is absolutely ridiculous. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. I am, I, it's just, it's, it's beyond me where our country is going. And so we cannot, we can't stop fighting. Um, so I'm not here as a survivor, but bravo to all who are. I'm here for my mom, uh, who's actually in Missouri right now, uh, because, she, sorry about that, because she is a survivor. Um, so in the 1970s a, at Texas A&M, my mom went to a party. She had, according to her, she had one Coke. She was tired. She went upstairs to take a nap. Woke up to a football playing guy size, um, football playing size guy on top of her. Brutally raped, went downstairs um, in ripped clothes, told people what happened and everyone went, no way. He is the nicest guy on the football player, on the football team. He must have been really drunk. He vomited on my mom. You think he was fucking drunk? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. So, yes. The guy was drunk. That does not make it okay. My mom had fucking panic attacks yesterday as she watched Ford tell her story. And I sat there horrified as I heard everything I have heard from my mother for the past 20 years. There is absolutely no way we can stand as this man sits on our Supreme Court. I'm Kristen Seal, and I'm running for the 168th House District in Delaware County. I am a multiple trauma survivor. I am a survivor of childhood sexual assault. I am a survivor of rape as a teenager. I am one of only three candidates this year that signed Pennsylvania Now's petition to make sure that we rid our state legislature in Harrisburg and our city of Philadelphia of legislators that are predators, harassers, rapists, and abusers. <laughs> here because I'm a little raw today. I don't know about the rest of you survivors that are here, but I needed to be in solidarity with you today because I'm having a hard day. Yesterday was we hard. We need to vote. We need to register to vote. And if you have the intestinal fortitude, run for office. Take their seats. I'm here for you and I thank you all for being here today. Uh, my name's Marie, and I'm an incest survivor. I'm the daughter of a sick, sad, twisted man who thought that was how he loved me. Therefore, I grew up thinking that somehow that had something to do with love. And so many, many times I was groped and, and actually raped uh, and always thought I, I probably had something to do with it. And it wasn't, you know, until yesterday when I saw her and I realized that even though I've come to terms with it, that's just the way it happened. And I'm the person I am maybe because I survived that. But what I thought was, as I was watching her was, 
all of a sudden I remembered a time maybe 40 years ago when I was at a party on Pine Street and I went into a bedroom with a guy who kind of pulled me in and I thought we were going to make out and all of a sudden I'm on the bed just like she was and I kept thinking I, I, I can't scream because because they'll all come in and think I had something to do with it. so I, I got away from him but I realized yesterday I still see him I know it was on Pine Street Street. I might not remember the address, but I remember him. Thanks. My name is Heather Cronin, and I am a survivor. We believe you, and we'll do something for you. And to, this is the first I've said that in a public forum. I watched yesterday while very powerful people asked Dr. Ford how much she had had to drink. Yeah. And then they asked her how many girls were at the gathering and how many boys were at the gathering. And then they asked her, and this is why I'm here today, they asked her what part she remembers the most. Yeah. And her answer was the laughing. Yeah. And I know she's telling the truth because only a victim knows how much the laughing hurts. And I, I know for me, until my last breath, I will remember the laughing. We already have a predator in the White House. We already have a predator on the Supreme Court right now. Let us not put another one on. Hi, I'm Reverend Kent Mathias of the Unitarian Society of Germantown, and I know so many of us are speaking up and saying that this is not the right way to pick the right person to be on our Supreme Court. Yesterday showed so many examples of people being insensitive and ignorant, at least, about the abuse and assault of women. Uh, the, at the very one area, just ignoring the swaths of research about how, what we know about Pat massive patterns of abuse and assault of women were blatantly ignored and ridiculed yesterday. It's unacceptable in this process. I want to share real quickly, I am an alcoholic. I am an alcoholic. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Thankfully, with the help of a lot of people, I've been in recovery for a long time, but I will tell you the short version is I know alcoholics. And alcoholics have some very regular patterns, which are also studied in the academy. And I will tell you, as a minister and as a recovering alcoholic, yesterday there were a lot of indications. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I'm being totally serious. And by the way, he, he said to Senator Leahy, you're making fun of my friend. He was not making fun of his friend who wrote and published a drunkalog book. He was saying, is this you being mentioned in this book? And he said, why are you making fun of me? That is something an alcoholic says. When someone else says, how many drinks is too many? Uh, I don't know, whatever the chart says. <laughs> that, I'm not making fun. It's an illness. I am not making fun. But you do not want an active alcoholic on the Supreme Court of the United States. It's an illness, and I am one. So I'm not, I'm the op, but for the grace of God, I could be drinking myself. I think he's an active alcoholic. Look, um, he was on Ken Starr's team investigating r financial wrongdoing of the president, which ended up investigating the sexual misconduct of the president and lying under oath. I think we can do the same kind of investigation of him. And they held up Judge Merrick for over a year. I think we can hold up and absolutely should uphold this for FBI to do their work. Thank you. Let's raise up like lions, Philly! Um, I have a call to action for the men in the group and anybody that knows a man. Um, you better get out into the street and start doing things because yesterday there were a lot of women. There were not a lot of men. Maybe a dozen of us. That's not a lot. Because if you look at the post that I made, there are there were a, over a thousand women at any given action. 
So we need to get out into the street. That's my call to action. Hi, um, I'm up here to share a song as a musician, as a mom, as an activist, as someone who cares about the challenges that we're facing right now. Also as a survivor of sexual assault. And I wanted to share this song because I don't know about you, but this is a time when hopelessness and despair can creep their way in and feel like they're going to take over. But we can't let them. And we have lots of tools at our disposal. We've heard many of those tools. We've heard political tools. We've heard plans. We've heard support. We've heard numbers that we can reach out to and people next to us that we can reach out to. And so I want to offer a song which was written by Melanie Damore because we can use our voices for many things. And to sing and lift each other up and keep us going on this path is a really important way that we keep each other alive and surviving and resisting. So you might already know this song. It's called Lead With Love. I'm going to sing the chorus and then the rest is a call and response. And I really truly do need all of our voices together. The chorus goes like this. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead. Okay, now repeat after me. Don't You gotta put one foot in front of, don't forget to move, and lead with love, put one foot in front of the other, and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other, let's hear you lead, and lead with love, put one foot in front of the other, and lead with love. Lift Is there. there? You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. One foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other. Yeah, sing it out. And lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other yeah. and lead with love.